Hello everyone, it's me, your average bonehead, Jay. Well, I did the worst, might as well do the best. Contrary to popular belief, The Loud House is actually a really good show. As I said hundreds of times, it has a lot of heart and passion put into it, and its characters are great. So yeah, not much more to preference, these are the episodes I think are the best. But two things to note. One, once again, this whole list is opinion based, so be civil and put your list in the comments below. And two, this was a very hard list to put together. Yeah, unlike the bad episodes where I can easily pick the handful of episodes that I think are worse than everything else, picking the episodes that I think stand above the rest was so hard because there were so many episodes I wanted to choose. So much that this almost was a top 20, but that would take too long. So instead, numbers 20 to 11 will be in the honorable mentions, which we will now go over. Number 20, Read Aloud and A Tattler's Tale. Both these episodes do a good job of showing how far Lola has developed, with one showing her have a weakness and the other showing her doing something selfless. Number 19, Sister Act. I've always described this episode as cover girls, but good, and I will always stand by that. And it also helps that it shows the unbreakable bond between Lola and Lana. Number 18, Cow by a Kid. What's this? One of Lincoln's friends having a relationship with his sisters rather than Lincoln? Stop the presses! Genuinely, why have they never done an episode like this for Zack, Rusty, or Stella? Oh well, at least Liam gets the good episodes of the group. Number 17, Fandom Pains. I really, really like seeing Lucy interact with her siblings, and this is a unique grouping, seeing Lucy interact and bond with her two oldest siblings, Lori and Lenny, and it's sweet to see them all get along. Number 16, Net Gains and Friday Night Fights. Despite being from different seasons, I consider these two episodes to be the perfect two-parter. Whereas in the episode Net Gains, Lynn Jr. learns a valuable lesson about teamwork, and then later on in Friday Night Fights, she ends up retaining this lesson that she learned and ends up teaching it to Lisa. Number 15, Deal Me Out. I really like the message of just because you grow up doesn't mean you have to let go of the things that made you happy. Thank God there wasn't any episode that was so abysmal it made the writers completely backpedal on this message and gave Lincoln and Clyde a new fandom to have. Thank God that didn't happen. Number 14, Save Royal Woods. Now that's how you make an episode feel special while utilizing the whole ensemble. I love seeing everyone band together to save their town, and the songs of the episode are great. I also love how it has the running joke of Flip's always coming in clutch for some reason, even if it didn't work out well in this episode. Number 13, The Luanne Episodes. Luanne and Benny's relationship is one of the sweetest ones in this whole show. In each episode that pairs them together, they manage to play off each other so dang well. Each of the episodes show off how these two funny drama kids are always willing to do anything to make the other feel happy and show how much their relationship means to each other. And they're always fun to watch. Number 12, The Loudest Thanksgiving. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of the Casa Grandes, this episode really does show what we could have gotten had their show just been episodes in the the Loud House. The Louds and the Casa Grandes all play off each other really well, and it's always fun whenever there's an episode that brings any members of these two families together. And finally, number 11, Friend or Foe. I really, really like seeing Lisa make genuine friends with Darcy, and I really am happy that she is a semi-recurring character, even though I really wish they just made her like a Clyde 2.0 type thing, where she appears more frequently than usual, just to give Lisa someone to really play off of most of the time, especially since we don't see Lori as frequently anymore, and also just because Darcy is a much better character than that godforsaken robot Todd. I can't stress how much I hate that robot. Alright, now without any further ado, let's get on to the actual list. Number 10. Once upon a time, there was an awesome space cowboy flying around the galaxy. A dark and story night. This episode takes a creative concept and just runs with it. The plot is that when the power goes out, the 11 loud siblings decide to play the game where one will start a story and the other will continue it, and they'll go through all of them. And one thing I love about this is that their sibling bond is on full display here, as no one actually interjects during the other's turn of the story outside of a few minor things, but they all accept that that's the way the story will go with the next person explaining it. Yeah, upon my first viewing, I honestly thought that they were going to end up arguing over how the story should go, but nope, they all just accept how the other is going to tell the story, and all their personalities throughout the story are on full display also. As for story itself, it's a fun little quest that their characters go on that's basically an elaborate reference to Inuyasha, which is a plus to me since I love that series, even down to Lynn Jr.'s character having two of the jewel shards located in her legs like Koga. Though to be fair, Lynn Jr. is an infinitely better character than that tryhard, plus their version's already better by default for not having Kikyo in it. And I can already hear my sister getting mad at me for saying that. Overall though, a simple episode with a fun concept, fun story, and a great showing of the sibling bond and personalities of our main eleven. Number nine. What do you think, sweetie? You want to try some ice cream? <gasps> huh? Ice cream? 
any given Sunday. This is a fun episode. The plot is that Lily hears from her parents that if her and her siblings are all well behaved for the rest of the day, then they will go out and get ice cream, meaning Lily will finally have her first. Unfortunately, her siblings don't know this and she can't convey this information to them, so they continue to just act their normal ways throughout the rest of the day. So it's up to Lily to keep everything clean and quiet before her parents get back home. But even when it's time for them to go, they keep running into more and more obstacles that Lily manages to hilariously and adorably solve each time, all leading up to her finally getting her ice cream only for the universe to throw a pigeon at her. Yeah, after everything she went through, I would have cried too. Luckily, this episode once again has my favorite running joke of Flip's always come in clutch, and Lily manages to get her ice cream. Lily is obviously the star of this episode, and I think this is her best portrayal ever in the entire series. One thing I love about the Loud House cast is that they're all more than their base personality traits. Each of them do have moments of development and where other interests and other ideals and other behaviors are shown. And this episode was Lily's turn. Her casually last Jediing the annoying baby tropes that you see in cartoons is one of my favorite things about her. Sometimes it feels like she's the only one in the family with a functioning brain cell half the time. And this episode puts that on full display. That and I also like that we get to see Lily's funny and warped perception of the world. Overall, this is a sweet episode. Number 8. It's gonna be quite an adventure, but I'm up for it. Huh, Lincoln was right. It does help talking to you guys. The Ronnie Ann Saga. This means the episodes from Heavy Metal to City Slickers. This selection of episodes is actually a rather controversial set, all due to the fact of the character they happen to be starring, Ronnie Ann. I see that people either love this character or they hate her. Well, if the ranking of these episodes is any indication, I am clearly in the camp of liking Ronnie Ann. In fact, I think most of her haters just really don't understand her character. The main crux of their argument for not liking her comes from her first episode, Heavy Metal, where in it, it implies the message where if a girl picks on you, that means she likes you. And while yeah, this isn't true all the time, I've seen other shows have this message done a lot more frequently and receive no criticism for it. Ahem. Plus, Ronnie Ann is a bully towards Lincoln in a whopping one of her episodes, and we don't even see her in this episode. Heavy Metal's entire point is just to once again establish that Lincoln's sisters meddle with his life. Plus, Ronnie Ann's actions make a lot more sense when we look at her next episode, as well as her proper debut, Save the Date. Where in this episode, we learn that Ronnie Ann has a very very fragile sense of self-worth. Where when she receives one insult from Lincoln, it completely breaks her. So it's pretty obvious that Ronnie Ann has self-esteem issues, but also likes Lincoln. So she probably thought to herself, if she picks on him, it will kill two birds with one stone. Obviously, that's not a good thing for her to do, but it's not like the show really does say it is. With the exception of Heavy Metal, and even then, that wasn't the point. But back to Save the Date, I actually really like this episode because I really like seeing Lincoln and Ronnie Ann make up and actually become friends. The main reason why people don't like this episode is because of how Lori was acting, and I'm gonna be completely honest, I 100% believe her and Bobby were faking it the whole time just so Lincoln and Ronnie Ann would become friends. With the way these two act, there is no way in hell they would have broken up over something that petty. The next two episodes, Dance Dance Resolution and Shell Shock, are mainly just there to show that Lincoln and Ronnie Ann have a lot more in common than they once thought, where they would both prefer to go to the arcade than the school dance, and where it turns out that Ronnie Ann is actually good at taking care of the egg they were assigned for a school project. The only episode in this saga I'm not the biggest fan of is Relative Chaos, and that's only because what it led into. I don't hate the Casa Grandes, but I always thought that they could have just had it so that they live with Ronnie Ann and her family, rather than her moving to them. They would have all been in Royal Woods, and then we could have had some of the episodes from their spinoff show just in the Loud House instead of being two separate shows, and therefore I wouldn't have to put up with these episodes. Plus, I just really don't like the reason why they moved in the first place, both in-universe and out. But it does get my blessing because I do like the ending with Lincoln and Ronnie Ann saying their goodbyes to each other. It really does show how far they've come as friends. And finally, I find City Slickers to be a really good epilogue to this arc, showing how Ronnie Ann is doing in the city. And showing how much also friendship does mean to her. When watched in order, all these episodes have a perfect upwards arc for Ronnie Ann. And I like how they turned her from a character we never see to a character we always want to see. Number 7. I'm back! Lori days. 
In the earlier seasons of the show, Lori was by far the most hateable character. With the way she would constantly flaunt around the fact that she was the oldest, as well as the power that came with it, I can honestly say that Lola had more likable moments in Season 1. However, from Season 2 onward, Lori began a very steady stream of development, where she got better, more mature for her age, and started showing that she did legitimately care for her siblings. And Lori Days is the peak of this arc. In it, Lori returns home from college for the weekend to spend some time with her family. But unfortunately, with all the time she's been gone, she feels like she's been drifting apart from her family. So fearing what could happen, she ends up taking her siblings all over the place all day, wanting to spend as much time with them as possible. And that's basically the plot. Of course, in Loud House fashion, things go wrong before they can go right, and this episode once again cements the Loud siblings' unbreakable bond. Watching this episode in contrast to Lori's earlier episodes is such night and day to see how far she has come as a character. But not only does it show how much she cares for her siblings, but it shows how much her siblings care for her. Even after all this time of her being away at college, they all still love her and look up to her. They will never forget her. And honestly, I find that to be so sweet. It's one of the main pillars of the Loud House that I love. How well these guys work as a family unit. And that's something about this show I think anybody can love. Number 6. It's the day before Christmas, and there's no better time to be in the Loud House. Eleven Louds a Leapin'. The season 2 premiere had a lot of firsts. The first double length episode, the first Christmas special, and a bunch of others that I'm about to go into. In this episode, the Louds themselves are kinda actually sidelined, and mainly just used for running jokes, ranging from Luann's 12 puns at Christmas, Lori trying to prevent herself from opening gifts, and my personal favorite, Lisa not believing in Santa, only because her science proves that it'd be physically impossible for him to go around the world at the speeds he does without his body imploding on itself. If so, with the Louds themselves being sidelined for this story, the real story is actually about their old neighbor, Mr. Grouse. You see, Lincoln accidentally loses his sled on Mr. Grouse's property, so when Grouse ends up claiming it, Lincoln, with the help of Clyde, ends up sneaking into Mr. Grouse's home, and in there, he ends up learning why he's always so grouchy at this time of year. It's because he never has enough money to go and see his family. And with him seeing all the Louds together with their big family, and him being all alone, he becomes jealous of them. So upon learning this, Lincoln returns home and tells his sisters, and all of the Louds, along with the McBrides, band together to do something special for Mr. Grouse, and end up giving him a plane ticket so he can go see his family for the holidays. Everything about this episode just oozes with the Christmas spirit, and just gives me that warm fuzzy feeling inside every time I watch it. On top of that, we have an amazing musical number, the grand reveal of Rita and Lynn Sr.'s faces, and Bobby almost dying of dehydration in a box. Nothing like all of that to get you into the Christmas spirit. Number 5 What are you waiting for? Hurry up and get that VIP pass! Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Woohoo! The Saluna Episodes Ah, the ship that walked so Lumity could run. There could be many episodes that could be considered Sam X Luna episodes, which are the episodes that feature their relationship. Though, for simplicity's sake, the main ones that consist of an arc are Ellis for Love, Racing Hearts, and Perfect Gig. I've already gone over Ellis for Love already in a previous video, so I'll keep it short here. This episode doesn't really feature Sam and Luna's relationship that much, but it does plant the seeds for us, showing us that Luna is bi, and having her be the first one of my collection. Racing Hearts is the first true episode to really go in depth with Sam and Luna's relationship, and it is a great episode. The whole point of it is to show that while these two are similar, they do have a lot of difference. Their own interests, things that one is good at over to the other. And honestly, I think this is a really good message to teach when it comes to relationships. Not everyone in a relationship is gonna have everything in common, but it's the willingness to compromise that shows why you two should be together. Plus, also finding that common ground. And it really is adorable to see these two find that in this episode. Perfect Gig, on the other hand, is the opposite, showing how well these two actually do work together and are at helping each other out due to how much they love and care for each other. And one thing I like about all of these episodes is, as you'd probably guessed, Sam and Luna's relationship. One thing that annoys me in other shows, live action shows, when it comes to two guys that like each other or two girls that like each other, is that they're written in a way where 
that's their entire personality, and that everyone else has to treat them as gods among people just because of that, and that every straight person is the devil, apparently. To me, it comes off as lazy, not wanting to write a legitimate relationship, and just wanting those good boy brownie points. Whereas in good shows, cartoons, the relationships are given more chances to flesh out and feel like actual relationships. And in the case of Sam and Luna's relationship, it's never once mentioned that they're two girls. It is just seen as a normal thing in-universe and treated with respect. I think shows like The Loud House, The Owl House, and Steven Universe does a much better job at normalizing these relationships than shows from other places. Ahem. But getting back on topic, Sam and Luna's relationship is so good it presented in all the episodes that feature them. Other episodes like Dad Reputation or In the Mick of Time may not be about the relationship, but I love them too just for having such cute moments with them. And it's why, honestly, they are my favorite ship in the entire Loud House. To the point where I must say, if you're someone who ships Lincoln and Sam for some reason, kindly kiss the pavement as fast as possible. And meanwhile, these two lovable rock stars will be proud and they will be loud. Number 4. These next three entries are on the list for similar reasons, as they all managed to last Jedi my expectations of what was going to happen in the episode based on how they started. And the first one on this list is... As soon as I finish this level, you can play all you want. Aww. How long is that gonna take? I don't know. Game off. I love this episode. In my eyes, this episode perfectly tackles the younger sibling wanting to use something that the older sibling has. In this episode's case, Lana wants to play Lincoln's video game, but Lincoln wants to finish it first. But unfortunately, for reasons out of his control, Lincoln is unable to finish that night, so Lana ends up sneaking downstairs and tries playing the game herself and ends up losing, causing all of Lincoln's progress to be reset. So the next day, with the help of her sisters, Lana tries her best to get Lincoln back to where he was while the sisters distract Lincoln, but unfortunately, in the end, Lincoln finds out what Lana did and is rightfully mad at her for doing so. And that's what I love about this episode. This episode could have easily messed up by portraying Lincoln as the bad guy. I've seen other shows portray the older brother in this scenario as in the wrong because they didn't let their little sister play with what's rightfully theirs. But not here. For one, Lincoln wasn't being greedy at all and did say that once he was done playing, he would let Lana play. But, because it was dinner time, he wasn't able to finish. The episode is fully aware of what Lana did was wrong, and therefore Lincoln has every right to be mad at her. And I love that Lincoln's anger isn't ridiculously over the top. It is a perfect level of upset and disappointed. And I do like how they give it some time to breathe, and by that I mean this is an 11 minute episode, so about one minute. But it still gives it some time to set in that Lana messed up and now has to regain Lincoln's trust. It doesn't happen immediately. And I like that Lana does try to get Lincoln to trust her again, and I like that he does. This episode really could have messed up and botched the message and made it so that for some reason Lana was not to blame for her own mistake and it's somehow all Lincoln's fault and he shouldn't have gotten mad at her. This episode was fully aware that Lana messed up and Lincoln had every right to be upset about this. But of course, we do get a happy ending, and it's so sweet to see these two bond closer together over video games. Which, on a side note, I really like how they do keep this continuity in Lori days as we see the two of them gaming together. So yeah, in the end, I really like this episode, and I really like how it portrays the concepts of siblings sharing. What more can I say than, well played. Number 3 You were right, Lori. Even though I lo lo didn't win... I'm really glad I did it. Gown and out. I've talked about this episode before, so I'm gonna keep things brief here. I love Lola's character in this episode. Seeing her overcome her fear of failure is so great to watch. And it really does show how far she's developed as a character since season one at this point. Made even better that in this episode, she finally learns to lose with dignity. This episode surprised me because when I first watched it, I genuinely thought Lola was going to try and sabotage the other pageant goers rather than sabotaging herself. So it completely threw me for a loop when she pretended to be sick so she wouldn't have to try. It was very interesting to see the guilt from this lie build up onto her throughout the episode. I also really like how 
how Lori was in this episode. This is another episode that shows how much better she got from season 1, as she fully plays understanding big sister mode towards Lola throughout the episode, trying to help her when she thought she was sick, but then also not being mad at her and understanding why she lied, as well as giving her encouragement by giving her an example of her experience with failure. Yeah, this episode really does just take the two most easily hateable characters from season 1 and make them into two of the most likable, and I love it for that. But I've already sung the praises of this episode in the past, so there's literally not much more I could say about it here. Number 2. You've earned this. <laughs> Thanks, Luan. Honey! Lucy's hugging someone! Get the camera! Head Poet's Anxiety. I love this episode. Much like Game Off, I think this episode perfectly tackles a realistic problem siblings could run into. In this case, jealousy. In this episode, Luann is doing her best to be the youngest person to ever perform in the Royal Woods Theatre. At the same time though, she's also helping Lucy be ready for a public poetry reading event. And based on that description alone, I think you can all tell what's about to happen. But before I get to that, one thing I do love about this episode is I like how Lucy is portrayed. This is one of the few episodes that remembers that she's only an 8 year old girl, and we get to see a bit more of her younger innocent side, and I just like that. But yeah, if it wasn't obvious what would happen, because of Luann's excellent training, Lucy ends up being so good at her poetry reading that her teacher has set her up to perform at the Royal Woods Theatre, completely crushing Luann's dreams. And because of this, Luann becomes jealous. And I like how they portray this. Despite being an 11 minute episode, they give this moment and Luann's actions more than enough time to sink in with the audience. Luann's bitter jealousy is of course upsetting to watch due to the fact that Lucy is not being malicious in any way. In fact, she's still asking Luann for advice of what she could do. But Luann just chooses to ignore Lucy, refusing to give her any form of help. And this is where the episode surprised me because I genuinely thought that side of Luann from those uncanon episodes that I hate was going to come out and she was going to try and sabotage Lucy. But no, Luann still accepts that Lucy got there first. And I find this funny because this episode is handling jealousy better than any episode that had Lincoln as the main focus. Speaking of Lincoln, he ends up telling Lucy why Luann is acting the way she is, and Lucy, realizing that she took Luann's dream, decides that she doesn't want to go to her poetry reading, and instead pretends to be sick. That's an odd pattern, however Lucy is a lot less believable. Upon realizing that Lucy is doing this for Luann, Luann realizes how wrong she's been and tells Lucy to go to the poetry reading anyways. And it's so sweet to see the two both happy together. And my heartstrings weren't just tugged, they were violently yanked in the ending when Lucy dedicates her poem to the person who got her there, her big sister Luann. And it is sweet. This episode, in my eyes, is the quintessential Loud House episode, as it not only is it entertaining, it handles a realistic problem that siblings would run into, as well as showing how strong the family dynamic of the Louds are, and manages to be very heartwarming. It's the perfect episode in my eyes. However, it's not my favorite episode. No. This is number one. I am Luna Loud! Really loud music. I've said this before, but it bears repeating. I adore this episode. Yes, the Luna Loud centric musical special is my all time favorite episode of The Loud House. You see, if you hadn't guessed already, Luna is my favorite character in this show. And the main reason is, is because I love the message of most of her episodes. They're always about Luna seeing how far she's willing to push herself and how far she's willing to swallow her morals if it means that she can finally get the stardom she yearns for. And you never fully know whether or not she's gonna do something great or if she's just going to accept that it's not her time yet and allow the moment to pass her by if it means she's true to herself. And at the point in this episode, this was the furthest we saw Luna swallow her pride just so she can get the stardom, only for her to realize this is not right and she has to be herself in my all-time favorite sequence of this show. That alone guaranteed it a spot on this list, but on top of that, let's just add in a whole slew of amazing songs from each of the main characters, a pair of lovably hateable villains that get the perfect level of comeuppance, and Luna's personality itself just bursting off the walls in every one of her scenes. And like I said before, Luna getting one of her greatest moments ever, and her family helping her out to achieve it, along with one of the show's best morals all wrapped up in a perfectly well-paced episode. But I've already sung the praises of really loud music in its own video, and I still feel like I could go on forever gushing about this episode. But for now, I think I've said all you guys need to hear.
The Loud House is a far from flawless show. In fact, I've already proven that in the past. But if you think it's bad just because of what you heard of it and never given it a shot, please. Just look at any of the episodes on this list or even the ones from the honorable mentions and then finalize your opinion with it. I've said it before, you don't have to like everything, but you shouldn't be upset that someone likes something you don't, especially when there's a reason why people think that that specific thing is of good quality. And as for The Loud House, as I said before, I love it because I love the heart and passion that was put into it. The comedy is funny, the characters are lovable, the messages it presents are great, and has one of the best portrayals of a family that I have ever seen in a kid's show. Even with its ups and downs, I still find myself coming back to it and enjoying it all the same. And there's not much more praise I can give it than that. Now, I'm your average bonehead Jay, and I wish you all good night.